is science used in designing golf equipment? Um, we have a, a fairly modest facility here. The, the USGA facility in Far Hills, New Jersey is bigger than this, but fairly similar. Don't worry about him, he's fine. He's just waking up or going to sleep. Um, but actually, the many manufacturers will invest millions of dollars in research and development into new materials. Um, they'll be interested in what golf clubs sound like, what they feel like to individuals, and they'll invest a lot in that kind of um, information. What our job is to do is to look at those innovations and see whether evolving in that way is in the best interest of the game. So trying to make sure there's a balance between embracing technology and how it evolves, but also making sure the most skillful golfer wins rather than the one who can just afford that extra advantage. Um, can you predict any future developments in golf? Yes, but not on camera. Um, so um, we've heard that you work for NASA previously. Yes. Um, are there any similarities between the rocket science and golf science? Yeah, golf science is a lot harder than rocket science. <laughs> it's a lot slower. So NASA, a lot of what I was doing was looking at stability of very high speed flows. But when I worked at NASA, I worked on a very small aspect of the project, whereas here I get to look at the whole thing. And the hardest thing we deal with is the human and how variable the human, even the best golfers in the world exhibit some level of variability. So we get them in here, we put markers in their body, put them in a CGI environment, and find out exactly how they're hitting. So understanding the human and the variability they bring to the game is a lot harder than what I did when I worked on that side. Um, what are the most, some of the most interesting things that you've worked on here at R&D? Uh, the humans thing comes back into that answer again, but also new materials. Working with, we work with various UK universities working on innovative projects where we're looking at research into where that microphone's going to fall over, where new um, materials are being used, trying to understand where science is going. Um, a lot of those, though, are, are things that never quite make it into the public eye. Um, have you any advice for a young person who wants to find out more about golf and science? Science, get on and, and make sure you get your, your education finished. Um, go on through into maybe an engineering degree, my, my, both my degrees are in mathematics. Um, try and make sure you get your education sort of robustly finished before specialising too much too early on. and. Um, yeah, just look at what's interesting, I guess. Are there any technical advances in um, golf technology? There, there are constantly technological advances in golf technology. So it used to be back maybe 20 years ago that more titanium was evolved for the aeronautical industry, whereas now it's probably being evolved for golf. If you look at the scale of the golf industry, we're probably talking about an industry that's worth around $6 billion a year. So it's a fairly large industry and people are investing a lot in understanding golf clubs, how they make golf clubs and how they make golf balls. So really, it's, a, it's an industry that's good for investment. It's good, it's a, a sport that is basically maintaining participation. It's down in certain areas in the world. But there's other areas that we're particularly interested in, that golf is actually a growing sport. So it's a, a good industry to work in. Um, how did you get into the golf engineering? The, I used to lecture mathematics in Birmingham, and the RNA approached the university to run a consultancy project. And so I was one of the four people involved in that project. Um, and they then looked to me to come up here and help them set up this test centre, which I did in 2004.